Welcome back, class. Last week, I said that in order to use our regression equation to predict next summer's rally results, we need to think of m, the dependent variable in the equation, as a random variable whose value on any future trial is somewhat uncertain. I said that m is actually the sum of five random variables, those being the five terms of the regression equation. I then stated a fundamental rule of statistics. When a random variable is itself the sum of other random variables, the distribution of outcomes after multiple trials of that random variable will tend to be bell-shaped. This shape is characteristic of what we call a normal distribution. And finally, I pointed out that the histogram or frequency distribution of M for the 30 riders last summer has something of a bell shape because M is the sum of five random variables. And with more riders, the histogram would be even more bell shaped. The fact that M is a normally distributed random variable allows us to predict rider performance in next summer's rally. Today, we'll calculate the probability that Gina, who trains with the apples, will ride more than 35 miles. But before we can do this, I need to explain the difference between a frequency distribution and a probability distribution. A frequency distribution is commonly used to summarize data that has been observed in the past. The x-axis of a frequency distribution shows the range of observed outcomes. The y-axis shows the number of times each outcome was observed. That's the frequency of the outcome. For example, this frequency distribution of rally results for a thousand riders tells us that 86 riders rode between 30 and 31 miles. In a frequency distribution, the sum of the y values equals the total number of observations of the variable. A probability distribution, by contrast, is commonly used to predict future outcomes. In a probability distribution, the y-axis measures the probability that a particular value of the variable will be observed in the future. For example, this distribution tells us that there is a 20% chance that a rider will ride less than 25 miles next summer and an 80% chance that she will ride more than 25 miles. The portion of the area under the curve measures the probability of an outcome and the total area under the curve equals 100%, which is the probability of all outcomes. The probability distribution of M values for next summer's riders is the key for predicting rider performance. To build that distribution, we need to know two things. First, we need to know the mean or most likely value of M next summer. And from now on, I'll refer to the mean value of M in a distribution as M hat. And I'll write m hat by putting a hat on top of the m. Now, we are assuming that last summer's riders are representative of the population from which next summer's riders will be drawn. So let's take the average values of last summer's gr, ge, and in scores and plug them into our regression equation. The resulting value of m is the most likely value of m for any given rider next summer. And that turns out to be 32. So that's m hat. The other thing we need to know to build the probability distribution for m is what is called the standard error of m. Standard error measures the average variation in m that is not explained by the regression equation. And it's usually indicated by the letters SE. When Linus estimated the regression equation for last summer's riders, it also calculated the SE of M. To do this, Linus measures the difference between the actual M values and the values predicted by the equation for each rider. These differences are shown as red lines on this plot of actual M values for last summer's riders ranked from lowest to highest. Linus calculates SE as the square root of the sum of the squares of the differences, all divided by 30, which is the number of observations we have for m. Here's the equation. Using this equation, Linus finds that SE for the distribution of last summer's m values is 3.8. Now note that 3.8 is 12% of m hat. We'll be using this percentage again a little later in the class. 
SE is the key to using the normal distribution to predict the probability of outcomes for a random variable. This is because in any normal distribution, regardless of its mean or SE, 34% of the area under the curve lies between the mean and one SE unit on either side of the mean. 14% of the area lies between one and two SE units on either side of the mean and 2% of the area lies above and below 2 SE units on either side of the mean. To repeat, these percentages are the same for any normal distribution, no matter what its mean or SE values may be. We can now build the probability distribution for Gina's M next summer and use it to calculate the probability that she will ride more than 35 miles. Using Gina's GR, GE, and IN scores in the regression equation, we find that her M hat is 30.2. Now, to find Gina's SE, remember that Linus SE for last summer's 30 riders was 12% of M hat for those riders. This percentage applies for any rider whose M hat we calculate using the regression equation. Gina's M hat is 30.2, and 12% of that is 3.6. So that's Gina's SE. Here then is Gina's probability distribution with M hat of 30.2 and SE of 3.6. The probability that Gina's M next summer will be 35 or more is equal to the area under the curve lying to the right of 35 on the M axis. In the old days, to find out what this percentage is, I'd have to consult a probability distribution table in the back of my statistics textbook. But these days, I can use a handy probability distribution calculator available online at hackmath.net. Using the HackMath calculator, I enter the mean and SE of Gina's probability distribution, and I specify the value of 35 on the x-axis. HackMath tells me that the percentage of the area under the curve lying to the right of 35 is 9.1%. So there's a 9.1% chance that Gina will ride more than 35 miles in next summer's rally. Next time, we'll use these same tools to answer this question. What's the probability that Gina will beat her brother Joey next summer? I'll see you next week.